with the variables defined and the function set in. Let's take a moment before we actually start writing it on the code and uh, do a little bit of commenting here. And it's always a good idea just to, if you're if you're dropping in code, take a moment, spend 10 minutes, spend a minute, and uh, comment lines before you get too much code going on. Uh, this one, this is just going to be this object right here, hit distance. What we're wanting to do is take this object and the, uh, the hit time uh, for seconds, and basically uh, it's the wait time before uh, the object translates back. So the, the character is going to have an amount of time that he's flying back. We'll take both of those and those are going to be for the seconds on the wait. And it may not make complete sense just yet, but it'll make it once we start doing the translation back with the character. And this should push where our goal uh, is to push as uh, push the player back, push player back one block, or at least close to one block as we can get. All right. Next one, the hit time. This is going to be the time for pushing the player back. Alright, and for the audio clip, this is going to be the uh, the hit sound, so we'll just say the hit audio file, and this one is the die sound, so we'll say die audio file. Alright, uh, this is our player link, if you remember this one is just going to hold the player object, so we'll just say hold player object, could say hold player game object if you want. Uh, this one is our hit left and our hit right. We just want to have a simple toggle for hit left that we can turn on and off when we need it. And this will be for the hit right. And then the change player state for this one, it's just going to toggle the uh, the player's changing state. That way we can turn it on and off when the player needs to change. So we'll just have a uh, toggle for changing player state. And even if these feel like they're already defined over here by word, it's still a good idea just to have that comment on the other side so that if someone else is reading your code, they don't have to try and figure this part out. But, you know, as much as it, to the point of English as you can make it or whatever language it might be, try to make it so that it reads easy enough for anyone just to, uh, to read it and go, okay, this is what the variable they want to have or this is the definition of the variable. Uh, for this part of it, we're going to just make a uh, variable that's going to hold the current time and then the uh, plus the delay amount. So if you remember just from our our function that we made earlier, so again this will just be the uh, variable holding the current oops, current time plus the delay time. And that will allow us to actually have our sound function working and this one will just be the amount to delay and we won't probably be using this one uh, but since we already had it in our previous we'll just continue to keep it the same so it looks the same and the player properties this is just going to be set for our player property uh, script file that we can just call up when we need it inside of our start we'll just initialize anything that needs to uh, initialize at the beginning and the update, well, we'll just set this as our main loop. So the trigger event, uh, this trigger event is going to be designed so that we can actually have the uh, anything that uh, enters the collision box. So we'll just do a basic, uh, we're just going to say it's going to, we'll actually call it a function here. We'll say function for checking on colliders. Entering box or entering uh, work, and we'll do another one. We'll just call this one uh, function, and the uh, exiting is just same thing as the other. It would be function for checking on colliders leaving. All right, now we have a hit left, hit right, and a hit dead. Each one of these functions, in terms of definition, uh, this is just going to be um, checking for the, uh, we'll just call it player getting hit on left. Left side, and this will be right side. So, player getting hit on right side. And then this one, uh, the hit dead one, this is going to be uh, if the player is getting hit. So player getting hit on either side 
and his last life. There we go. Let's see. We've got one for changing the player state. So this one, uh, this is just going to change. Again, be similar to what's right there, but it'll be change state of the player. And we'll just put on here just so there's a uh, a note for it. It'll be small, large, fireball, or we'll say fire. So we'll put in the dead state as well. All right. And then our sound file, uh, this one just plays a uh, sound and delay amount. Okay, so we've just a little bit of time to do our, uh, do our commenting. Be sure that you've done your commenting. Set it up the way it best works for you. So if you need to describe it differently, then feel free just to describe it how you want to. Uh, for the getting started at this point now, let's go ahead and just get in and figure out how we can have the two interacting, make sure they're working together, and then start moving the player around. Start off, let's go ahead and go to our start function. And for for all of these inside of here, we want, we're probably going to do a little bit of jumping around uh, as we kind of build up the code, but uh, we'll, we'll try to stick to just more of a downward flow. We'll see how it goes. The, uh, the start function itself. Uh, let's go ahead and define and initialize a couple of elements inside of here. One of the things we want to do is get our player link. Um, the player link, again, this is going to be our game object for our player. Uh, we're just going to have it equal to the game object, and this will be find. What we're going to find from here uh, is going to be the player. Now, if we do the game object find, remember this is actually finding the actual character's name here, not the tag name. This would be actually the name here. So you could go either way with it. Um, if you want to do the uh, the find with tag, then you could do the find with tag option instead. Uh, for our find, we're just going to do this in quotes. So we'll say player. This can be a string. So this is going to allow us to find the player. And we're going to assign uh, the uh, the player link to it. All right. So once we've found this one, then we want to go ahead and do one other one. We want to set up our player properties. So the uh, player prop, uh, this is going to equal the player link. And the player link dot get component. Remember, when once you've found the object, so I find the one I want to use, then I'm going to use this one and do the get component from it. This one is going to allow me to find the component we need, which right now our component we want to use is the player property script. So we'll say get component and player properties. All right, and that one. It's going to get our player properties JS file, JavaScript file. Uh, once we have those two uh, initialized, we'll be able to just call those up whenever we need them inside of the functions and uh, just be able to use them throughout. Um, so, next thing, uh, this one is kind of optional in terms of uh, whether you do it first or last or just do it during the process. Is that sometimes, uh, if I've already defined my functions and I know that I want to be able to use my functions uh, inside of my update, then I'll go ahead and just place them in here. It, when you're when you're working on like some really large code, you may sometimes create a function and then forget to place it into the update, and then it, 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 you're going to notice that it just doesn't update. Well, if you do it ahead of time, then you may not have that issue. Um, so, for instance, we're pretty sure my hit left, hit right, and hit dead, and change player state. These sound like something we could actually just call up separate inside of here. So we'll go ahead and just set these up. We'll just say uh, hit left. And hit right. And then we'll also do the change player state. Alright. So by having these inside the update, it's automatically going to be calling whatever the code is inside of here. Um, it's also going to be calling it up constantly. If it's something that you want to have as a check, then you may want to just put a, uh, an if statement on it, or you can put an if statement inside of the, the options here, so that it will read this and read it only one line in. All right, so if we have those, let's go ahead and define each of those here. All right, so this one is just going to be uh, check for hit left. And check for hit right. And then the, the uh, change is just going to be the change player state. 
Oh, and it looks like we actually forgot hit right, also hit dead. So let's be sure we add that one. So hit dead. And is that one or two? Let's see. Okay. Check for dead state. All right. So we have our functions inside of here. We've already got kind of the update. Uh, finished, we can put the rest of it inside of the functions themselves. On the trigger events, we have our two trigger options. We have the front, the uh, left, and the uh, the right. We want to check for both of those when the player, when the collider enters the trigger. Now, the trigger itself is going to be this player box, which means that when this enters it, uh, this character can actually be standing still so that when he enters, um, he activates the trigger. All right, and that's something that you may want to double check. It, it may kind of get confusing, but when you read it, uh, even based on, let's pull up, uh, pull this one up. If we're checking for our trigger events, the uh, trigger um, on trigger enter, it's just be sure that you read it properly when you're reading these. Sometimes if, when you're first using them, they can get a little confusing, but it's uh, when the trigger event is called, when the collider other, which we're talking about other from our... Uh, option here when it lowers, uh, other option here. So when other, uh, so when the collider other enters the trigger, okay, so that means that this has to enter this one. If we have it the other way around and our player is not, if our player is standing still and this guy comes into this guy, if it's set that way, it actually won't trigger anything to occur. So just be sure that you get the the right direction, the right order with it. And when you're working on your own, if you notice that it doesn't it doesn't actually activate, if something's standing still, then you need to switch the order of uh, other and trigger. Okay. Hopefully that kind of makes sense to you. Uh, if it doesn't, again, you can also just play around with it for a while. Um, for us though, for this one, we're just gonna set the uh, the on the on trigger enter is going to be checking for tag name. So we're just gonna say if other tag. And if it's equal to the enemy collision left, so remember from our um, tag option over here, the object here and the object here was collision, the enemy collision left, enemy collision right. Okay, so we're just going to check that if the tag name left was actually pressed, then what we could do, we'll start off just to make sure that it works, we'll say print left. And we'll do the other one. If other tag name is going to be equal to the enemy collision right. And if it is, then let's do the same thing. We'll just do print right. All right. And let's go ahead and save this one. So if we go in here and we play it. All right. And let's double check on our errors here real quick. Make sure we got everything set up. Up on line 21. So again, if you had noticed while you were working on it, great. Um, if you didn't catch it, then just be sure to go back to 21, put a semicolon there. All right. So we'll go back to here. We'll push play. And then with this one, so if I go over here and I touch them on this side, it's left. Um, if I jump to the other side, it says right. Right. So our collider is working. It definitely allows us to know that we're hitting the left and the right side of the player, which is good because this lets us be able to actually move the player uh, when we're going to do our push. We can actually push to the left, push to the right. Okay, so we have our uh, our setup on that part of it. The, uh, the collider on exit is going to be the same thing starting with. So let's go ahead and, and delete these two parts. Let's go ahead and copy this. Just so you can copy or you can retype it either way. Um, I'm just going to I'm going to paste it down inside of the trigger exit because what we're going to be checking for on exit is the same thing. We're checking for the tag on left and tag on right. Okay. Now for the entering on this one, uh, when we do the uh, on trigger enter, the collision on the left and the right, what we're going to be doing is just setting our uh, our true false statements for hit left and hit right. Uh, we just want to set those to true. So for the uh, the hit left, we'll say hit left is going to equal true. All right? And this is going to be what we're what we'll do is actually inside of our function down here for hit left and hit right. We're gonna we're just gonna have a a check. It'll be if it, if hit left is true, then do the code inside and then reset it to false. And that way it'll just be a single. Actually, we'll probably set the the false option through the exit. But we'll have it set up so that we can just do a quick check on it. 
uh, for here, the hit left on the uh, on the trigger enter, we're just going to have it set to say uh, set hit left to true. So hit left to true, or you could even say enable. There we'll just do enable. So enable hit left, and down here we'll just do the hit right. So we'll say hit right is going to equal true. So enable hit right. So that's all we actually need for our trigger enter. All it's going to do is uh, just simply define the. Uh, it's just going to change our hit state to true or false. And we'll go ahead and def uh, set up our tag uh, option right here. We'll just say that if collide with enemy on left. And down here, if collide on right. Enemy on right. There we go. And then we can take, let's see, we'll move this back over. Um, our other ones for on the trigger exit. So the trigger exit itself, this is going to be something we can we can uh, kind of look at here. But let's we'll start off by defining our hit left and our hit right. And then we'll jump back up to the exit. For the hit left and the hit right, let's go ahead and start off with just one. Make sure we actually make it work. Uh, the idea behind this one for the function itself is that we want to essentially be able to check for whether or not the player is colliding with this one and we want to check the player's uh, the current state isn't um, uh, isn't going to be the small state because the small state he would actually instead of going to a hit he would go to a die state we'll start off with just one check though and then we'll just build on it a little bit later all right so for the state let's go ahead and just do a, uh, a conditional here we'll just say that if the hit left is true so meaning that if our hit left up here is set to true, that we want to, uh, if it is true, then let's actually uh, make something happen down here. So we've already done a print statement. We know that that part of it's going to work. So we can actually just go into, um, first thing would be a uh, some kind of sound to actually play. So we could do our, our function for play sound. And we already know our... Uh, parameters here. Let's say we've got sound name and we have delay amount. So our sound name, if it's just a hit, we just want to do the hit sound up here. So we'll just say play sound, hit sound, and the delay amount will just be set to zero. And then from there, we'll go ahead and uh, once our play sound is in, let's go ahead and just comment on this one while we go. So we'll just say play hit sound file. All right. Now, at this point, what we need to do is actually move the player back. So, if we want to actually have it so the player goes to here and this occurs, it's going to move the player back this direction. So, moving a player, how do we move a player? If we're going to move our player, it's going to be the transform. So, we're just going to transform and translate it. So, if we do the player link that we currently have, our player link uh, transform, here we'll do it on this way right here. So, we'll say player link transform. Uh, dot translate, and on the translate side of it, um, we basically want to move it back a distance. Well, we have our hit distance up here. The hit distance is going to be how far we translate it back on the x. We want to move them not just straight back, though. We want to move them back and up. So we're going to do x and y. We'll move them on both axis points. Uh, for this one, we'll just do a negative since it's going to be going backwards here. We'll do a negative hit distance. And with a hit distance, let's make sure that we actually do this based on time. Um, so we'll just do a time dot delta time. All right. And then the hit distance on the upwards, we could have these as separate. Like if you wanted to have them further backward than you do up, then you could have a, uh, a hit distance um, left to right and then hit distance up and down. I'm going to use the same word for both though. So we'll just say uh, hit distance on here. And this is going to be positive. We're just moving them upwards. So hit distance times time dot delta time again. All right, and then our last one uh, is just going to be zero. We don't want to move him forward or backward on this one. Um, however, when he dies, though, if you think about it, we don't want to have him die and land right back here. So we'll probably move him forward. I think in the the regular game, he's like in front of the screen when he dies. So we'll have him move forward. All right. So with this one, we have our uh, we have our translating option on the x-axis. He's actually moving backwards that direction. He's moving to the left, and he's moving at, at the uh, hit distance and the time. 
and then we have the height being moved up the same as the distance up uh, as the same distance is left now with those if we have both of those the only thing we want to do next if you notice part of the things we have inside of here is that we have a uh, we have the check to turn it on and off well if this is an immediate turn on and off um, he's actually not going to uh, he's not going to play through his sound but he's just simply going to jump back uh, actually let's let's go ahead and see how this looks real quick I believe oh let's see looks like we may have had an issue with our code let's double check what we have here um, on line 58 um, transform let's make sure we actually put it in the right way for it and make sure we actually spell this right so transform so again, if you noticed when I was typing it and you just typed it right, that's fine. Uh, so we've got our transform translate. We can resave this one and go back into Unity. Okay. So what should happen is when we play it, make sure it actually works right for the first time here. And when we play, the box hits, and you notice it actually hits backwards, and the play sounds well now. What we need to do, one, is we need to actually be able to turn it off. Notice when he came back, he just went straight back and continues back that direction. Well, we're going to have a, a basic time that he's going to play back before we turn it off. All right, so we have our yield statement. So if you remember our yield wait for seconds, well, we will go ahead and put in a yield wait for seconds, and this is going to be based on the hit time. Okay, so what we were looking at up here is again we had the uh, the hit time and hit distance uh, the hit time is going to be how long it takes for him to jump backwards and then after that point we turn it off okay so we'll say on the hit left again we're playing our sound from the hit and then we're playing the movement translating backwards and we're only going to play that translating backwards for uh, the point I think we had it point two seconds Alright, so he'll move back at a distance of 3.0 at a time of 0.2. Now, when we do this one, what is still going to be hopping him back, but the difference is he'll just be hopping back to just about a block distance. So notice it's just about a block distance as he goes across there. Alright. So if he goes back a block distance, um, what we need to do then is actually when the the character leaves the exit trigger, we need to go ahead and turn off his hit left to false. We need to go ahead and disable it. That way we don't have to worry about him continuing to bounce all the way back through there. Alright, so let's go ahead and define this part of it. So on the uh, the hit left for the wait, we're just going to simply say that this is the, uh, the wait time so that the uh, player um, can move back one block. Alright. Yeah, let's go ahead and go back to the start here. All right, so if we have the hit left and it's working right here, let's go ahead and go back up to our uh, exit trigger. So we've hit now. Once we leave, so the moment the, the uh, enemy pushes him back, he's going to leave the uh, the collider. So on the trigger exit, he's going to have enemy collision left. So when we leave it, let's go ahead and do a couple of things inside of here. Let's start off with a, a short yield. Now the yield is going to be the same time as the time for the hit time. We just want to double check, make sure that we have everything covered. We could probably write this a little bit better, um, but for the moment, we'll just write it out this way. Um, we're going to make sure that the wait time is the same time as when the player starts to move backwards. And then we'll do just hit left is going to equal false. All right. And with that, this is actually should just allow us to be hit once and then actually be pushed back. So when we get hit, he moves back one. We get hit again. Oh, and actually, there we go. So he should, there we go. He should be hit every time he goes into there. All right. Now at that point, let's go ahead and uh, once we have this part of it set, we can actually do the same thing for the right side as well. So let's go ahead and set up our right side form. And this can either be copy paste, change things, or you can just rewrite it uh, into it. Either one. So we're just doing the uh, wait for seconds, hit time, and hit left. Actually, hit right. It's going to equal false. And then same thing for the function down here. Hopefully you're able to kind of keep up with what we're putting inside of here. We'll also do a uh, walk through the code after we're done with it, just so you don't have to um, 
be jumping up and down. Uh, for this part of it, the hit right, um, so we're just doing the if hit right, and if hit right is true, then we're going to be playing a sound. We're going to be moving the character on a positive direction, not negative direction. I'll go ahead and just copy and paste this into the hit right. Actually, let's do all of this right here. Okay, so this one for the hit right is going to be translating in positive direction. That means that we're on the on the other side of him. When we hit that box, it's going to push us to the right. And uh, on the distance for the up, it's still going to be up, so it's still going to be positive on this one. All right. And for your wait seconds, we still want to do the same amount of time, so there's not going to be a change in that part of it. Okay. So with those, we now have our hit left or hit right functions. They're being called up currently inside of our update. So every time, uh, it's, every time it's updating, it's doing a check if either if either of these are actually true. It's going to be setting it to true to allow it to play the code inside of there. And we have the on the enter, we have true for left and right, and then we've got these turning them on to false. Okay, so at this time we have our hit left and hit right working. Let's go ahead and play it, make sure that everything works this way. So then we have a issue with line 51. Just double check that we have it set. This is actually misspelled. There we go. And once it reloads, player should drop in and play. Um, he should be able to be hit one way this side, and then if we run and jump over him, if he hits us this way, oh, there we go. And then we have the hit going this way. All right. So with that, again, this allows us to actually have the hit left, hit right. Um, what we want to do at this point, though, is that when he gets hit, uh, we want to actually change this, the player's current state. So if you remember the enumerations from player properties, uh, were the different states that the player could be in. We want to access the player property states and we want to change it and then we're going to call it up through our switch case statement. We're going to load up the player state and we've just like we've done before when you want to change the state, remember we have to actually change the uh, inside the update. We actually have to just change Mario to true and now change the player state. Alright, so inside of the collider attack box um, with our, let's see what we want to do. We'll go ahead and go into the change player state function here. Um, and actually, not to throw us too far off here, but the, the play sound, if you already have that function, either find that function again and just copy and paste it. Um, if you don't want to copy and paste it, if you want to rewrite it, you can just rewrite it from right here. Uh, this is just simply the exact same thing we've already done with the, I believe it was inside of multiple files, but the player controls has it as well. And uh, I think, let's see if player properties has it. I don't know if it does or not. Nope. Okay. So player controls, you can get it from there. You can just retype it. This is simply just going to be taking the player sound, uh, the play sound option, and uh, doing the same thing we've already done with it before. Alright, so inside of the change play state, we're going to take uh, a look at how to access the player properties and then set all the different types that he could actually go into. Um, starting off with, we have our bool statement. If you remember from up here, let's see if we have one. The change state option right here. So the change state, um, let's actually, we'll go down here, and let's go ahead and make a, a check for this one. So conditional, if the uh, change state is actually true, then we actually do something. So change state, we'll start it all off with that, and then we'll build from here. And inside of here, let's see. Uh, first thing that we want to do, uh, we're just going to check for each of the states the player could be in. So we can just simply say if. Now, at this point, this is one of those things where um, hopefully it doesn't take too much thought for you. Is that if I said, how do you access the player state? Um, you should be able to, by this point, feel at least, you know, uh, halfway confident that you could just go in there and say, well, it's going to be the P prop, the player property. And then I'm just going to access it through the dot notation and select the right player state. If you're still having trouble with that, if you're like, well, I still don't get it, uh, be sure that you take some time and, and go back to kind of the basics. Because um, accessing different scripts, accessing different scripts from different objects or the same object and different components, um, definitely an important part when you start building all of these things. Uh, for this one, though, if, if I'm actually trying to access it, then I just want to grab our player property and then the player state. Remember, we're not, we're not accessing the direct uh, enumeration here. We're just accessing the, the, uh, the variable type we've made uh, 
forward on that side. So let's see, uh, player property dot state. Uh, this one, we're just going to check that if it's equal to zero, which we'll do the uh, zero through three right here, if it's any of those. So if it is equal to zero, then we'll, um, it's actually, we could, we could put a print statement on each one of these, and we could just say uh, what we want it to be. We'll go ahead and set up each one, though. All right, so if, here we'll make this even easier on ourselves. All right. So what you could do is just copy and paste each one of these. We're going to have the player states 0 through 3. So we'll just say, uh, we'll paste this in here. It's going to be if player state is equal to 1, else if player state is equal to, uh, I'm sorry, 0 and then 1, and then we'll do 2 and 3. All right, there we go. So we have 0, 1, 2, and 3. This will check for each one of our states for us. So let's see, once we have all of these, let's go ahead and define, let's put some comments over here. Uh, so when it's on state 0, we're just looking at our player property, 0 is the dead small large fire. So on this one, we'll just say check if the uh, player is dead. And we'll put the number next to it there. And then number 1. We have this one, uh, which is just check if the player is small. Let's see. Number two. Just gonna be a check if player is large. And number three will be check if player uh, has fire. Is I will just say is keep it same is fire Mario. All right, so that'll check it for all three of our states and the uh, the change state option for this one again when it's set to true. Well, in order to make this actually set to true, we want to go ahead and just we can go back up into our uh, on our enter. Um, let's see, where do we want to place it here? So when the player enters it. If we have it enter it, it's going to actually go too fast for it. So let's go ahead and do on the exit. So when our player exits, let's add an extra line here. Is that we'll go ahead and have the hit left uh, turn to false. But then once it turns, once the hit left turns to false, then we'll play the change state. So we'll make sure that the player is already being moved over. And then once he's being moved over, then we'll set the change state to true. All right. So do change state here. Okay. So again, this will enable the change state for the player. Let's go ahead and just comment all of this here. So we'll say this again. We'll just say this is going to be enable um, change state to change player state. All right. And then the hit right, uh, when it sets to false, we're just going to say turn off hit right. And for this one, it's just the uh, the wait for the hit time before changing the states. So we'll just say wait for hit time for changing states. And let's put in that last part. Uh, this one, this will just be our check. So if collider... Um, leaves the enemy on the right, then do all the things inside of there. Okay, then we'll just basically take the same, same comments from down here, we'll just put them up here for the left one. Oops, make sure I'm actually looking at the right one here. And it will change state to change player state. And this one will be turn off hit left and wait for hit time and if collider all right 
we have our um, our trigger exit pretty much done. Uh, this should be all the things we need is that we'll be able to turn it off, and then we'll check for our state. We'll set our state uh, change state to true, which allows the uh, the change state down here to actually check for which play which state the player is currently in. So again, if the player is uh, in the death state, then it's going to actually change to a different state and uh, call up a different set. Same thing for the player small going to the death one, the large one going to small one, fire going to the large. So we'll just have it set up so that every time it enters one of these, whichever one he's currently in, then it changes to the next state. All right, and we'll do that one in, uh, right after this. Let's see. Let's make sure we've got everything else commented. Yeah. Okay, so we'll save this one, and we'll come back to this in just a little bit.